Hi guys, my name is Joby and welcome to the Fundi Podcast where we get to sit down with very cool entrepreneurs from all over South Africa and see what they're up to. My first guest today is Lineka of Thirstbusters. Very unique service, it's app-driven alcohol delivery. Who would have thunk it? Like Uber Eats for alcohol. Markins. Most of our growth has been organic and organic through social media, mm. through word of mouth, mm. through us delivering a good service. Do you, do you feel what I'm saying? So the customer base that we thought we'd never have is the yeah. Afrikaans, white, middle-aged man in Boxburg. No way. That is, the, that, is, that is like one of our biggest customers. It doesn't help me sitting at home and, and watching the guys doing deliveries while the business is suffering. So I also get into the car and just do deliveries, pack the stock and just, yeah. The Fundi Podcast is proudly brought to you by the Mesa Fundi, powered by Windows 10 Professional. The Mesa Fundi, flexibility reimagined. Lineker, how's it going? Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for inviting me. I love your story. One, I'm mad that I never yeah. thought of what you do. <laughs> And I'm even more mad that, okay, now that I know what you do, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, so how do I, how do I get into how this thing? In? Yeah, yeah. How did you come <laughs> up with Thirstbusters? It was actually inspired by an idea when I was working in an office park, and this truck used to come around at lunchtime. And I think I went to that truck for about a week. The week turned into like two weeks, two weeks to a month. And I was thinking the whole time, this is actually a good concept. It's a good idea, you know what I'm saying? Like getting stuff delivered to you. Yeah. And I thought, what is the one thing that people actually want delivered that is not delivered to them? Alcohol. You know, how many times as well have you been sitting at home chilling? It's 10 o'clock, mm-hmm. a lot of stores are closed. You know of the one place that's open, but it's a drive to get there first and foremost. There's cops. Third thing is you're already drunk. Yeah. You don't want to dr- drink and drive. You don't want to do that. Exactly. How's it about bringing convenience to people and actually delivering alcohol to their doorstep? Once you introduced your business to me, mm-hmm. and my business partner, Mac and I, yeah. all we did was on the drive back from that function, it was a party. Yeah. All we did was talk about it. Just you. discuss the. And we just kept saying, <laughs> how do we do just- <laughs> We're like, can we call him? Can we ask him for shares? Can we bring yeah, investors? Can yeah. we bring money? So how has it been now that you, you already, you've got an app, it's on Google and uh, an uh, iOS. iOS store. Correct, we've got a web app as well, so. How's the pickup going? The pickup is good. The process in the beginning was very hard. There was a lot of things that I thought I needed that I realized that I didn't. When the business actually started, it didn't start with an app. So we went to Macro, bought, bought stock with about 7,000 rand during the week. Weekend by Sunday, the stock was sold out just off uh, social media. In six months time, and then I decided, nah, we need an app now. Uh, there was no one that gave us funding. It was a dope idea, and everyone would be like, it's a dope idea, it's a dope idea. But like no one was saying, it's a dope idea. How can we get it to the mass market? So we decided to do it ourselves. So got an app here in South Africa by some developers out of Pretoria. It was an app just because it was an app. Yes. It wasn't functional at all. Ah, so uh, the user experience? Yeah, the user experience was lacking, but it was just nice to be like to people. We had an app, but then there were so many things that were wrong with it that we <laughs> even knew yeah. that sometimes it was even embarrassing for us to be like, we have an app. At some point, I decided, you know what? i, I got to invest everything that I have in this if I really truly believe in it mm. and get a proper product that actually works. People usually benchmark apps against the best they've seen. If you pull out an app and I say to you, I've got an alcohol delivery app, you, when you use that app, your experience is benchmarking it against an Uber, Uber Eats. Yeah. So it has to work. It yeah. has to be functional. It has to do what I want it to do. If we say that the service is that amazing, yeah. then everything has to be that amazing. And then ended up investing in, in the new development out of India. Again, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's you just figured out how to Correct. make it happen. Correct. It didn't matter. Correct. You know, like you're a true fundi. Correct. You know, you didn't have an app, so what? Yeah. Uh, didn't have marketing, so, so what? what? You went yeah. to Macro, bought the drinks, yeah. figured it out. Yeah. yeah. And slowly by slowly, the word has gotten out. Correct. What are the unique surprises you've learned along this? Like, especially from a customer perspective, yeah. what are the different types of customers that you never thought you would have, yeah. but for some reason, while you thought this was my customer, what happened? The customer base that we thought we'd never have is the yeah. Afrikaans, white, middle-aged men in Boxburg. No way. That is, the, that, is, that is like one of our biggest customers. When we first um, got our inventory, Cliff Drift was like, so little, we're like Clip Drift, who drinks Clip Drift? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But now Clip Drift has become like our biggest seller because of those guys in Boxburg. So the really? Boxburg market, the Centurion market, those are markets that have been surprising. And surprising enough, the Nigerian guys as well that like come and visit the country. Yes. Because you know in the Nigerian community, if you do something right, the word spreads. Yes. The one clientele here is on the Clip Drift and calling Black mm-hmm. Label, then we had what, the what are the international visitors ordering? Hennessy. Hennessy. Yeah, Hennessy is like our, our biggest seller. So doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter. Hennessy is like, we go through like a case of two of Hennessy like every weekend. Like that's, that's, that's definite. 
Like Hennessy is like our number one seller. My goodness. Yeah. So what have been some of your other uh, stumbling blocks or I guess uh, logistical issues? You know, um, from a delivery perspective, did you have a vehicle? How are you guys doing? Yeah. The delivery is still an issue because you're competing, as I said, with like big guys who are yes. paying so much more per delivery. And like the delivery guys don't understand that like you starting out and then it's like, yo, dude, like I need to, I need to feed my family. I'm going to go with the bigger guy. <laughs> yeah. If you can't offer me what they're offering, sorry. The logistical part of it in terms of the times that we operate, because our busiest times are at night and the delivery guys, the Uber guys, they used to work in during the day. And you operate deep into the night. We operate deep into the night. So by 9 p.m., most of them are shut down. 9 p.m., you're, you're picking up. Correct. We've had to do a lot of the deliveries ourselves. We still do. It doesn't help me sitting at home and, and watching the guys doing deliveries while the business is suffering. So I also get into the car and just do deliveries, pack the stock and just, yeah. We've got like now we've got two bikes, we've got a car and we're looking for another another vehicle now to do yes. the deliveries. Yes. And we're also looking at onboarding other drivers as well. Yeah. Besides the alcohol, what are the other little unique things you started to add on? What are, what are the customers telling you? There's a lot of things that like go hand in hand with alcohol. Yes. Right. And, and, and we know this and we could shy away from it. But yeah. we're like, nah, let's actually incorporate this into the service. What are those things? The condoms. That, that was, was like our biggest demand. Really? Condoms. So we deliver and people will be like... So alcohol was first, condoms was yeah. next. Condoms was like, Oh, I need snacks. Yeah, no, I need snacks. But like condoms <laughs> is like the biggest demand. So people will be like, we deliver to them be like, can you please quickly just go to the garage and just get me condoms and be as discreet as possible in the ride? And be like, no, no way. why don't we just incorporate this into the app? We get condoms, we can just sell them to the guys. There's been points where someone has ordered from the app and we've gotten there and the person wasn't there to pick up their delivery. Yeah. But that's like maybe two since we started operating. Really? Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah thankfully like, that's not a major issue. I want to understand where this fire and this passion for business comes from. My mom was a single parent, so she, she, she shipped me to the Free State yeah. to go live with my great-grand at the time. My great-grand ran a successful tavern without, she couldn't read or write. Really? And she ran a credit business. She used to have like this big, big black book. If she draw your credit, so for example, she'd say, baby Joby, I remember Joby by his glasses. Yeah. So she'd draw you and your glasses, glasses yeah. and then she'd draw your beers next to you, whatever, and yeah. she'd know how many beers, beers. you owe, and then she'd just mark them off like that. So I think that was the first time I actually fell in love with business because I could see money coming in and yeah. I could see the flow and the trans transactions, you know, and Supply I was like- and demand. Correct, and I was like, this thing is, yeah, this thing is good. Reminds me of my grandma. She always had cash. Mm. It's always mm -hmm. running around. Yeah. Always like waking up early. Yeah. Go to the always, church real quick, do her prayers. Yeah. Then she was just, she always <laughs> yeah. had money. Yeah. First job that I got actually for, that led me into promotions was I was going door to door selling conventional ovens for like yeah. 9,000 Rand. So we go like after school, literally five days a week after school, we'd go, we'd go to different neighborhoods, we'd knock on people's doors. I'd come through, listen, Joby, I'd like to come through later on. and demo this conventional oven that I have. This thing cooks uh, meat and uh, your veggies at the same time. So I'd work throughout the night. I worked up till about like 10, 11. I was 16, still in high school, Monday to Friday. My mom obviously didn't, didn't approve, but I was just like, yo man, <laughs> I'm gonna get this cash, you know? And then I went into a house one time and I knocked into this house and the lady was like to me, oh my goodness, you're so good. I want to offer you a job. No way. And then I started doing promotions for Samsung throughout uh, high school and varsity. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. story. So the sales and the hustle, that's just always been ingrained it's in always, you. It's always It's been part there. of your DNA. It's, it's always been there. Well done. Yeah, no, nah, thanks. What's your daily routine like? What do you do? As soon as I wake up, open up my laptop, just check the numbers. And then that will motivate me to get my day running and be like, damn, we only have five downloads. Yeah. You need to increase the number. Because the thing is, we have a goal of getting to 10,000 downloads by the end of December. Yeah. So we've broken it down to our 50 downloads a day. So that's what we need to achieve for us to get to the goal. I feel like everyone right now that's in the team has a fresh approach to this thing. It's not like because the industry standard says this or the industry norm is this, we can't do this. I get you. Everyone in the team is working off, let's just do it, why not? Yeah. What are like three takeaways you've learned so far? Uh, on, on, the, on, on, the, on the road to you as, a, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what, what are the three key lessons you feel you've learned? First thing, if you put in that hard work, there will be a result at the end of the day. Like, yeah. they definitely will be. It might not come at your time. Yes. It might not time come when you expected it yes. or the way you want it, but there definitely will be a result. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, don't listen to everybody. Through the journey of me starting the business from when it started up till now, there's so many people that have wanted to invest. Mm. There's so many people that have an opportunity for the mm. business. When you listen to that, that takes away so much time and energy because you, you, you're banking on this thing happening and then it never does happen. It's like, oh. And you yeah. partly stop what you're doing Correct. to pay a little attention, attention to, to this. There's certain times where you hit desperation. Did you there? You want it to happen, you yeah. want, you know? But then like someone comes and says, we can make it happen now. And you're like, yes, finally. That desperation drives you to actually listen to whatever it is that like someone else is telling you, but it's derailing you from your actual track. Yeah, I, I always tell people that 
we always I'm always I expect people to surprise me, mm. but I don't expect anything beyond the surprise. Yeah. So if they do do yeah. it, oh my god, they did Correct. it. Correct. But if they don't do it, then it's like ah. I'm on my mission. Correct. Regardless. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. There's a point where I thought if I don't have two hundred fifty thousand rand right now, I can't run this business. When I got the quote for the app from India, it was $27,000. Yes, that sounds about right. It was $27,000. I've developed yeah. apps. It sounds just about right. And I remember I was looking at the quote and I was like, nah, there's something wrong. Yeah, and, and I took out my card. That's like 400,000 rand. Yeah, that's 380,000 rand. I was like, 380,000 rand. <laughs> I was like, no ways. I was like, I was like definitely, definitely no ways. How, how, yeah, how am I going to make this? this where, where am I going to take this money from? from? Mm. I thought it would take, for example, six months to a year. To, it happened within three months. It happened. Yes. You need to make it happen somehow. Incredible. You need to somehow. My oh, man, thank you so thank much. You. This is Lenica right much. here, Thirst Busters. Make sure you download the app, 18 and up, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, young and trying to order something. <laughs> Unless your grandma at the door. <laughs> yeah, we check no. IDs as well. We thank do. you. So oh, yeah, you guys check IDs. Perfect. Yeah. They will be <laughs> checking. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks no, man. thanks, man. Yeah. You're, you're a true fundi. Sure, thanks, you thanks know, a lot. The, the, the hustler, the hard work, the yeah. ethic, the nothing's going to stop you. Yeah, this nah, is nah, why nah. I had you on the fundi podcast. Thank you. Nothing will. We're definitely going to be the biggest alcohol dis uh, distribution. I know it. From the day I met you, I knew yeah, it. We definitely will be. Uh, that's what we're working, working towards. That's our goal. That's our aim. That's our mission. And we'll make it happen. You will. We definitely will. I believe it. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for being here, man. Sure, thank you. Everybody likes free stuff, especially when that free stuff is valued at over 4,000 rands. Mesa is giving away the Mesa Fundi to one lucky winner. To enter, follow at Shop Mesa and tag a friend in the comment section of this post. The Fundi podcast is proudly brought to you by the Mesa Fundi, powered by Windows 10 Professional. The Mesa Fundi, flexibility reimagined. So there I am with my, I think it was my MacBook. And I have it then. It was just a bit of a tight flight. Yeah, yeah. So the guy in front of me had leaned back. And, and, he was, <laughs> and I, I couldn't use my laptop, right? And then I look over and some dude's got one of these. And homie's like this. Living yeah, his best life. life. Because with my life. other laptop, I had to worry about this. So yeah. now, this is this was me with a regular yeah, laptop. I can imagine. Right? You can't see how much you're doing. So now there's two hour flight to Cape Town. I gotta watch this guy live his best. <laughs> and he's watching like, I don't know what series. He's laughing. He's getting a drink, and the whole time I'm just looking at him like, ain't this a mother? <laughs>